The European model is forecasting a major winter storm pattern to develop along the east coast as we approach the late portion of January where we could see a significant jet stream dip that will lead to multiple low pressures moving up the east coast and bringing major snowfall to many areas in the northeast. If we were to take a look at the European model's um, current scenario, we do see that the European model is of course expecting this midwest snowstorm to move through by Thursday to Friday time frame. Make sure to pay close attention to that if you're within the trajectory of this old pressure system but if I were to continue move forward past this old pressure system we, we're going to see that a low pressure system will come off the Pacific Northwest coast where we're going to see a high amount of cold air behind it as well and that cold air will interact with this very warm air mass that's going to create a very unsafe environment right around the midsection of the country for a form formidable low pressure system to develop right around the Midwest and continuing to move forward with the forecast we do see that this instability begins to enhance even more as this slow pressure system continues to move further eastward and as a result of this significant jet stream dip and we see that there while there is some ridging located right up along the east coast we do see that it isn't necessarily a very strong amount of ridging that the european model is forecasting definitely compared to the GFS model, where the GFS model is forecasting a much stronger ridge. So as a result, this slow pressure system won't move that far northward very quickly as it the jet stream is going to position itself um, towards more of a due east direction rather than a uh, southerly direction. So as a result, this old pressure system will move further eastward and that will allow the quarter side of this old pressure system to move into northeast where we're going to see a heavy amount of snowfall and a very powerful northeastern impact in many of uh, many areas of the northeast including the interior northeast and in this scenario at least what the european model is forecasting it is mostly a rain event for the bigger cities along the interstate 95 corridor such as boston new york city philadelphia however this snowstorm will set the stage for the cold air to move into the bigger cities of the northeast and that will set the stage for potentially another major northeaster to impact the bigger cities along the interstate 95 corridor where in this scenario we do see that the um that the boston area experiences well over a foot of snow and new york city experiences six to twelve inches so does philadelphia and washington dc also gets involved with heavy snowfall and potentially a blizzard as we approach the january 26 time frame which is late um next week and if i were to um go a little bit further backward we see that there's that possibility that this next snowstorm could happen as early as january 23rd and there's still a high amount of uncertainty with the forecast so i wouldn't rule out that the snow could move eastward into the bigger cities depending on how strong this ridge is just to the east of the soil pressures and that will really determine the trajectory of the soil pressures I and mean, that will also determine how much instability we're going to see surrounding the soil pressures system because if the ridge is a little bit too weak then we might not see as much instability for this storm to develop as rapidly and this storm is forecasted to occur six days from now so there's still a lot of time to iron out the forecast but i'll keep you guys updated as it seems like the european model has been persisting on a major snowstorm to not only impact the northeast but even portions of the midwest where we do see ohio indiana michigan get involved with some snowfall and this is a powerful low pressure system so you want to pay close attention to this and there is a decent amount of cold air locked in place in the northeast so this will impact millions of americans all across the northeast and of course we'll set the stage for a major snowstorm pattern to develop along the east coast where you see that after as we approach the late january time frame we see that um we see that um there's a huge jet stream dip throughout the eastern half of the united states and we see another trough that's expected to move right behind this trough that's located in the northeast that's has its millibar pressure drop down to 962 millibars so we're gonna see a strong northerly flow associated with this old pressure system and that will force the cold air to move further southward and that will weaken and that we're gonna see weaker jet stream winds as a result of a weaker amount of ridging 
being located along the east coast and that will allow for a significant jet stream dip to occur for much core temperatures to occur and low pressure systems to take a trajectory that would bring more snowstorms to the northeast as well as the midwest and we do see that the european model also expects a very strong ridge build along the west coast and that's key because typically uh, a very cold and snowy pattern for the northeast typically involves a strong ridge located along the west coast where we see a big bump in the jet stream that allows the jet stream to dip very far southward along the eastern half of the United States and we're seeing that with the European model scenario so this is suddenly uh, um, a very interesting development that the European model has taken as of the latest run we're going to need to see if this persists over the next several days however the European model has been the more reliable model this winter so it, there could be some truth to this forecast but so a lot of days to really iron out the forecast because the GFS model is still in pretty big disagreement regarding the trajectory the exact trajectory of the solar pressure system where the GFS model expects a much stronger ridge so low pressure system moves further westward. Let's take a look at a GFS model right now. Continuing to move forward with the GFS model, of course, this next major Midwest snowstorm is expected to move through as we approach the late week. So make sure to pay close attention to that in the northern Midwest. But continuing to move forward, we do see that the ridge is a lot stronger than the GFS's model scenario. It's there's a bit more ridging a little bit southward. So that'll force low pressure some further northward rather quickly rather than having a chance to move towards the east coast. So we primarily see mostly a rain event for most of the northeast outside of maybe the higher elevations of the northeast and this will be more of a snowfall threat um, for the northern great lakes and even moving past that even moving to the july 26 um winter storm we do see that the ridge still a very strong amount of ridging still exists right around southeast and that again forces the snow a lot further westward than the european mall scenario so since the two main computer malls are in pretty big disagreement it you need to take note that this forecast is definitely subject to change over the next several days despite the fact the european model has been the more reliable model this winter does not at all mean that you should completely um you should completely take the european models forecasts out of context because the gfs models the gfs model is almost just as reliable in most cases so we can't completely disregard the gfs model either but it but it is something to point out that the european model has been the more reliable model this winter so it so we might need to give the European model a slight edge when it comes to it, this scenario with this storm, uh, with the next few storm systems. So definitely keep that in mind, but we can't disregard the GFS model either. But even if we were to take the GFS model's forecast seriously, we do see that it still wants to bring some snow to the bigger cities in the Northeast where New York City does get involved and Boston as well gets involved with heavy snowfall. So this will still be a significant snowstorm on GFS. January 26th, we need to pay very close attention to how this unfolds. Really all depends on the ridging just to the east of this old pressure system. Take a look at the GFS's models forecast when it comes to the 500 millibar height anomaly. We do see that there's this big strong ridge that's bringing that's a little bit further southward than the European model. So that will force this low pressure system on Sunday by time um, to move a little bit northward. Um, so that's certainly something to pay very close attention to. The European model, however, like I've been saying, is taking a completely different scenario where we do see the ridging is a lot weaker at the same time period the GFS model forecasts its old pressure system to move in the Midwest. So as a result, it will have much more of an open opportunity to move eastward and bring that colder air further eastward because of course the cooler air associated with this old pressure system will be located just to the northwest of this storm where the northern the stronger northerly winds will be located so if this old pressure system is able to move just south enough and just to the east enough of the northeast and we could see the northeast experience those stronger northerly winds and that will allow for a heavier amount of snow to occur right up along the coast so then these we're gonna need to pay very close attention to how this ridge builds as we approach the um next week and i wouldn't say we'll get a confident forecast till i say maybe friday or saturday once this old pressure system actually moves ashore along the united states so um that's when we'll really determine how strong this ridge is so i'll keep you guys updated as we get more uh, as we get more updates um and changes with the computer models forecast 
So if the European model's scenario was completely re um, correct regarding the next two storm systems and this major snowstorm pattern um, developing by the late January timeframe, we do see that the European model would expect major snow pretty much all, in, um, all throughout the Northeast where everyone in the Northeast gets involved. Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, Hartford, Boston, you all get involved with very heavy snowfall as, um, as we end the month of January associated with these next few snowstorms and we even see over a, um, two feet of snow in some areas um, in the interior northeast as a result of the next few snow, snowstorms moving through so that's only something to pay very close attention to and we do see 6 to 12 inches right around New York City over a foot of snow right around Boston and borderline close to two feet in the Boston metropolitan area so if the European model scenario was correct then we will be in for much more active winter for northeast than what we've been seeing over the past several months. If the GFS's model's snow forecast was correct over the next 10 days, we would see heavy snowfall throughout much of the Midwest, including Cleveland, where you would experience 6 to 12 inches of snow. And the interior northeast, of course, still gets involved with very heavy snowfall, and even Boston as well. But we do see the some of the major cities along the east coast, such as New York City, Philadelphia, and even Washington, D.C., don't get involved with snowfall at all as we end the month of January. So there's still a pretty high... Um, on, there's a, still a pretty high um, disagreement with um, between the two main computer models but I'll keep you guys updated over the next several days. So this is how the European model is depicting how the end of January will look. We of course see a very very powerful arctic blast move through the east coast where we see a powerful low pressure system bringing a strong northerly flow bringing down that jet stream which is bringing those cooler temperatures and we see a very strong ridge located along the west coast as this is a type of pattern that brings much colder and snowier than average conditions for much of the eastern half of the united states so if the european models um, scenario was correct we could be in for a much more active few weeks when it comes to winter weather for much of northeast which will be definitely a lot different than what we've been experiencing so we're gonna need to pay close attention to how this unfolds because this could completely change your fortunes this winter when it comes to snowfall and cooler temperatures so again, here's the European model's forecast in more detail regarding the snowfall over the next eight days. We do see that the European model wants to bring over a foot of snow over the next eight days um, throughout much, uh, pretty much um, covering all of New England. And we even see some areas um, that um, the European model forecast to receive over two feet of snow. And we do see that New York City gets involved with six to 12 inches of snow, um, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. as well, as this would be a significant get um, snowstorm pattern for millions of Americans right up along the northeast. Of course, this forecast is subject to change with the European mall since it is very far out, but definitely something to be aware of because we could be in for major snowstorm pattern developing up along the east coast. But thank you guys for watching.